And it's my honor to welcome Kelly Keefe to our conversation this afternoon. Kelly is the first female president in ERC's 100 year history. They celebrated their 100th anniversary this year. She has held that role since 2018 after having served for almost 15 years in leadership roles at ERC. She is a firm believer that great workplaces value both results and people. Her capable leadership is focused on helping organizations, not just locally, but across the country, become more people-centric. With her vision, ERC has grown their services in training, in human resources consulting and support, in coaching, in assessments and in research services. And if you think they do a lot, their reach is broad, you would be totally right. She recently hosted an incredibly successful virtual version of the North Coast 99, a program that's been around for a long time and recognizes 99 of Northeast Ohio's best companies in which to work for talent. She was recently recognized in this past May as one of Cleveland's CEOs to know. She gives back. She serves as a volunteer for Meals on Wheels, as a college now mentor her, with her alma mater, Notre Dame Cathedral Latin, and on the board of Make-A-Wish Foundation. She is the proud mother of three very active young people and a member of LC 2020. Now, I can't say an alum because that class refuses to graduate. And I know you've got some of your classmates here on this call, so I'm just gonna call you all out for that. So with that, thank you all for joining us and we look forward to your wisdom, Kelly. Thank you. That was so kind. Um, I wasn't expecting all of that. And actually, I wasn't expecting any of this. I think I was asked to do this a couple of weeks ago. And I thought, oh, sure, there'll be like 20 people. And now we've got like 100 people on here. So, um, so glad. Well, not, not quite 100 yet, but we'll get there. So, so glad to be here. Let me see if I can share my screen. Um, and so I have a Mac. So as soon as I go into play mode, your faces are all going to go away, which makes me a little bit sad. Oh, you're still there. Okay, good. Um, but anyways, I am delighted to be here. We have a lot to share, um, a lot um, to, to cover. I have a lot of data and I typically like to be pretty interactive. So bear with me because I'm gonna try to plow through this as much as possible in 15 to 20 minutes, but this is such an important topic. And by you just being here shows your commitment to supporting your employees from working from home. Um, this, uh, I can't believe that we're at month eight, but here we are. So Marianne already covered me, so I'm just going to skip all that. Um, so today's agenda, like I said, lots of data from ERC's member survey this week. I have the, uh, because I'm the president, I'm allowed to tell our employees what we want to survey our members. So just this Monday, we sent a survey, survey out so that I could respond um, and give you guys the data as to what organizations in Northeast Ohio are doing around this topic. I have some data from our North Coast 99 top performer survey that I call liquid gold. We asked over 6,000 top performers from the month of March till May, what was mattered most to them. So I'm gonna be able to share some of that to you. What leaders can do to help employees during this time, what organizations <clears throat> should be doing. And then I actually asked a few of my own employees at ERC what matters to them. I'm gonna cover a little bit of battling loneliness. I am not a doctor, so I'm going to give you my perspective of it. And then just some other fun random tidbits. So I am reading The Infinite Game right now. If you have not read it by Simon Sinek, it's um, quite relevant for today. No matter how successful we are in life, in the game of life when we die, none of us will be declared the winner of life. So that is so true. We are all going to pass on to another life. So let's make the most of it. Even though we are in a pandemic and we are in super tough times, let's make the most of it. And you as leaders and as employees can help to do that. So, like I said, time for polls because at ERC, we love people data. That's how we make decisions. So, just on Monday, 69 Northeast Ohio organizations participated in this poll. And what I'm going to do is share with you, there's three slides on this on what ways that organizations are helping employees on a professional level. So, we're talking about professional level right here. Um, and there's some good statistics and then there's not some good statistics. So having virtual team meetings, obviously we're all doing that, um, allowing their employees to loan out their office equipment. Hopefully we're past all of that. Communicate regularly the state of the company, which is great. Ongoing performance check-ins between managers and direct reports. 
supports, virtual trainings, virtual all staff meetings. Those are all really great percentages, not as high as I would like to see some of them, but all really good. Then we get into some statistics that are kind of staggering to me. Um, offering additional technical assistance for remote technologies, only 39%. Um, administering an employee engagement survey, only 34% of employers have done that. If you have not done that, um, I'm happy to help. Um, but that is something, you know, if you're not asking your employees, how are you able to respond to what their needs are? Um, virtual celebrations, this 31%, and actually kind of makes me sad when I saw the statistics. You know, professional achievements, if you're not celebrating someone's professional achievement right now, who is? It's very likely that they're not gathering with friends, they're not gathering with other people. So it is their leadership's responsibility. It's managers, supervisors, take time to celebrate. We all need reasons to celebrate right now. One-on-one um, -on -one coaching, a virtual team building exercises, and then reimbursement for home um, equipment purchases, 20%. And then some of these on this last slide are really staggering. And I hope that you take some of these as actions and to-dos for your own organization. Um, adjust performance management process to include agile goals that are more fluid and dynamic. There's not one employee at ERC, including myself, that has the same goals that they have today that they had March 14th and 13th. So if you have not taken the time to meet with your employees to discuss what their new goals are, um, I would take, strongly encourage you to do that. Employer resource groups, otherwise known as ERGs, we call these. If you have not heard of this, I would take the time to look this up. This is an opportunity for organizations to create community within your organization. So again, this is a huge um, disappointment in this percentage, which more organizations would take a part of that. Um, a virtual staff retreat, provide mentorship opportunities. I'm gonna get into this a little bit more, but we need each other right now. Um, organ uh, employees that have the wisdom need to be able to share that with the younger professionals right now. Um, and so mentorship opportunities as low. And then we already talked about the established employer resource groups, which I will get into a little bit more. So again, some of these statistics are a little staggering and I hope that you can take these as to-do items for your own organization. So now I've got two slides here on a personal level. So how organizations have it, um, helped people on a personal level. Great statistics allowing employees to work on a flex time schedule. That's almost like absolutely needed. Um, they have been providing their EAP, their employee assistance program. Again, do not play doctor, do not play psychologist, leave that to the professionals. So um, if you don't have an EAP, again, I'd be happy to help. We have some great um, partners that we can work with refer you over to, but this is so important. I've met with three clients last week and they all mentioned their EAP that they wanna share that with their employees. So go ahead and do that. Um, employee, communicate about wellness related information, 64%, it's fine, but that's like a one email. That's, that's a real easy thing to do. Um, organize virtual wellness activities that takes a little bit more effort. Another, this 31% have managers or supervisors reach out to employees for non-work related check-ins. This costs zero dollars. This costs nothing, yet it could have such a huge impact. Think about an employee, maybe it's you that's working alone, that doesn't have anyone um, checking in on them on a regular basis. This matters so much. Organizing virtual social activities, that's obviously for fun. Um, provide recognition of personal milestones or life events through virtual celebrations. Again, happy birthday, happy anniversary, those types of things. They don't cost anything, but they can make a huge impact. Um, and then let's see what else I want to touch. Oh, allowing employees to switch shifts. Um, I saw a cute little baby on here at the beginning of this session. I don't know if it's still on, but, um, you know, Children's schedules have changed. There's so many changes that have happened. So is it really going to impact your business if you allow somebody to maybe start at 10 a.m. and finish at 6 p.m. as opposed to eight to five or, you know, or 6 a.m. Or, or they take a three hour break in the middle because they know that their freshman um, has algebra class and it's super hard. I don't know why I said that out loud. Maybe it's from experience, but you know, so everyone has their own challenges right now. So. Think about allowing employees to switch their shifts. Um, and then 
allow employees to switch to part-time temporarily or for the foreseeable future. However, I'm going to talk about something called she session that if any of you have heard about that, so I want to address that 14%. Um, so anyways, as you can see, there's lots of opportunities, um, probably at your own workplace for us to do a little bit more or a lot more to help our employees stay um, engaged. So a little bit more people data. We um, have been conducting a lot of engagement surveys, as I mentioned so far this year. Um, three topics that I just wanted to bring up. A number, number of employees discuss concerns with their mental health. So obviously this is, employees are speaking this. So please acknowledge that this is a real thing. Um, many employees emphasize that they would like for their organization to have some sort of version of work from home after COVID. So if you as leaders have not talked about this, you might wanna start talking about this because who knows when this will end, but it's a good conversation to just start having. And then some, or, some um, employees also believe that their organization is doing great because the organization is responding to their family needs. So that is the kind of the silver lining that it doesn't have to all be doom and gloom that there are organizations that are doing that because they are looking at the whole, the whole employee. We keep saying that the whole human being of the employee. A little bit more data. This was that liquid gold that I talked about from North Coast 99. This was our top performer survey data. So we had over 6,000 people fill out what mattered to them. And I think it's super um, enlightening if you look at like number one through five. So coworker cohesion, they wanna work together. Engagement, they wanna be you know, buried in their work. They wanna feel good about what they're doing. Performance and alignment, they want feedback. They wanna know that they're aligned to the organization. They wanna feel valued and they wanna have innovation and then supervision. They wanna be able to talk to their person. If you notice rewards and recognition is down at number 12 um, and number nine at autonomy. So when you think about what top performers are looking for, so these are the top of the cream of the crop. We could have all these workers. They are looking for engagement. They're looking for ways to work with other people. Job attributes rated significantly less important in 2020 compared to 2019, as I just called out. Autonomy it was always at the top. It rose. It um, went down. Benefits. You know, people are just happy to have a job and happy to keep their mind busy. Challenging and meaningful work, development and growth. And then, what's more significant and more important in 2020 compared to 2019? is job security and leadership. All of you leaders on this call, it has never been more important for you to be the best leader that you possibly can. And if you feel like you need some help, reach out to a coach, reach out to a friend, reach out to somebody you can trust because leadership is so important. Um, as I said, some employees, that's all they're hearing, that's all they're seeing is you know what the leader is doing with the organization, whether it's your calmness, your agility, whatever it may be. Um, and then no significant differences, compensation, co-worker relations, work-life balance, supervisor, no real big significance between the 2019, 2020. So the reason why I say this is it's not just me and where my head is coming from. This is all real data about Northeast Ohio businesses. Another uh, quote, work-life balance has nothing to do with the hours we work or the stressors we suffer. It has to do with where we feel safe at home. But if we don't feel safe at work, we will suffer, perceive a work-life imbalance. And that couldn't be any truer than it is today. So I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on this next two slides. So the first, I've got 10 items for you as leaders. Um, and I'm gonna say every single person on this call is a leader, whether you are working for yourself or working for other people, you are a leader in some way, whether it's family or friends or whatever. Work on your own resilience skills. Leaders, you need to be able to be resilient um, for your teams and for your employees. If you don't have the resiliency skills, it's gonna be hard for you to share that within your organization. And more than ever, focus on your whole self. Um, you explore your physical, your social, your mental and your emotional. This is all so important. Get a diverse perspective. Of course, if you're a graduate of Cleveland Leadership Institute, anything you realize how important it is to have a diverse perspective, but I'm talking about even more diversity than you've ever even thought about. Talk to those parents that have children that are working school at home. Talk to those parents that have kids going into school. Talk to those people that have, um, they're caring for somebody that's autoimmune. Um, talk to, you know, just get diverse perspective on how everyone is doing with this. Be open-minded to different ways of everything. Um, I, at the beginning of this session, uh, beginning of the pandemic, I was talking to a leader that said, 
well, you know, so-and-so can't work these shifts. They're saying that they, you know, they have a baby at home, a newborn, and they have to take care of it. And after some time I had to interrupt and I said, well, yes, of course, because that baby is fully relying on this mother to feed it, to um, care for it, to put it down for a nap, it needs everything. So that leader needed to think differently about everything. Don't jump to the worst case scenario without the facts. For, for so many reasons, this is so important right now. I know I can jump to the worst case scenario. Um, an employee just emailed me on Friday and said they wanted to get together. So I jumped to the worst case scenario. What does that mean? Or what did I think, of course, that they were going to resign? They actually said no. They just wanted to engage in a conversation with me that they had um, just returned from maternity leave and we haven't been able to talk. So that, you know, don't jump to the worst case scenarios. If somebody misses a deadline, if somebody misses a meeting, you know, find out the reason why, maybe give them a break. If it turns into a pattern, obviously you have to adjust that. Realize that people are nervous for so many things. We've got an election coming up. We've got, you know, pandemics, we've got people that are sick. We've, you know, the news is, the news is terrible, <laughs> right? Um, people are nervous on a regular basis. So be kind when you're talking to them. Provide a safe environment. If you are in the office and you are, you know, be a leader that wears a mask. Be a leader that enforces your six foot distance. Be, be the leader that provides a safe environment so that your employees aren't feeling insecure or unsafe. Be as transparent as possible. And I know this is really hard, but it's so important. I don't know, frankly, if we're going to be giving raises at ERC this year. I just don't have that information yet. And I decided to share that information with my staff at a staff meeting last week. I don't think probably anyone loved hearing that, but at least they know that information now ahead of time before they do any shopping. I am as transparent as I possibly can. So I know financial information is super hard. Us as leaders, we're very prideful, but as much as you can share with people, then it's out there in the open and they can move on to doing the work. Again, if you haven't heard the term she session, find out about it. Um, and try to stop it at your organization. If you can just remember how hard it was to find talent back in January and February, I know it seems like a lifetime ago, but I was giving uh, webinars on that all the time. So she session, I can't even say that word, but um, women are leaving the workforce um, in very high numbers right now, obviously for reasons, taking care of families, et cetera. Try to be flexible, try to change that. Use your glimpse into home life to make conversations more relevant. So you can see behind me, you know, I've got my, um, my house. You know, sometimes people have cats going across the stage. My son actually just got home from school. He's trying to make himself lunch. So, you know, just use those opportunities to make it more real for people. And then I'm going to say this many times, ask them, ask the people what matters to them. All right, I am running out of time. So for organizations, have regular one-on-one -on -one group communications, have a schedule. Ensure your onboarding process is rock solid. Go back to your first day of work and try to envision your first day of work being completely remote with nobody checking in on you, anything like that. Your onboarding process needs to be rock solid. Create the buddy mentorship program. Leadership teams have meetings that focus on engagement. Don't have any other agenda item except for engagement and how you're doing that. Um, stress management sessions, Zoom open houses, regular check-ins for all employees. Um, appreciate that employees' own costs have risen, which I just was made aware of this, this week, but printing, coffee, the toilet paper, right? I mean, things that they're used to getting in the office are now happening here. Again, share your EAP. Have a plan for employees struggling with substance abuse and addiction. I personally know quite a few people with that right now. I'm sure you do as well. Again, ask them the engagement survey. Um, I'm gonna skip over some of these quotes because I wanna make sure we have time for questions, but these are quotes from my employees. I am most engaged when I can see results. The blue one, I need to feel connected to the larger goal, the mission of the organization, and that what I'm doing makes a difference. And then I thought this last one was great because you know we can't think of everything that our employees are experiencing. I appreciate that ERC helps me prioritize my sleep. Sleep is my number one priority. If I don't get enough, I know that I won't be able to be the best impact for ERC. And that's because we're doing trainings in different time zones. So anyways, you never quite know what your employees are looking for. The most, uh, you guys can read this quote. I thought it was just kind of uh, pretty telling about how important it is for us to focus on loneliness. Helping pet employees battle the loneliness. Most employees where they meet employees where they are and be okay with that. You know, be okay with your employees struggling. Recognize they're going through this um, there are five stages, just like death. 
Organize mental health check-ins. How you doing? Just make it official. Arrange for speakers on topics. Be flexible and kind. Make it personal to each person. What one person that's 22 wants is very different probably than the 62-year-old and the 42-year-old. Most people just want to feel supported, heard, and valued. I bet you can make a huge impact today if you just picked up the phone and called one employee and just said, how are you doing? Other random tidbits, this is my last slide. This was me just being creative. So online coloring pages, I found this out the other day. You can color on in a community, do a coloring contest. Play off the holidays at ERC, we're doing a trunk or treat on Friday. Do a Santa drive-by, do secret Santa, do a Thanksgiving feast. You can do all of this virtually, just think about it. Check out local nonprofits, they need volunteers. I'm gonna do a plug for Make-A-Wish right now. Um, outside exhibits, I know the Cleveland Zoo is doing one, Botanical Gardens always. You know, Maybe you have a staff outing or you just give everyone the opportunity to go on their own. Check out the arts, um, you know, the films, the music, et cetera. There's a many different businesses that are booming right now through Zoom, group painting, flower making. I just made up beer making. I thought that would be kind of fun. Maybe <laughs> we should do that. Um, a virtual scavenger hunt. I've heard that people have gotten everyone together on a Zoom and they've said, go find a paper clip, go find you know, a, a pen, those types of things. Another free event that's just fun. Share a holiday memory with photos. Perhaps you have photos from years past of your employees or you just ask your employees to share years past of their favorite moments. I'm sure they have something as a child, if not recent. Um, again, just get together and brainstorm. There really is so many ways for us to do this. Take this seriously. It doesn't seem to be going away. Uh, we are just started talking about North Coast 99 in September next year. It's breaking my heart. I don't know how to make a decision about that, but we need to take this seriously. There's so many people impacted here. I am happy to help. Take the step to help somebody else. Um, and there's our email if you have any further questions. But that was rapid fire, Rachel. I did it in, uh, what, 23 minutes, less than that. <laughs> Kelly, that was great. And we did have a question. Would we be able to share your slides? Yeah. With the sure. OK, wonderful. So we will share those uh, in our follow-up email. And we do have time for some questions. So would love to start, um, had a question come in. So a lot of tips about how leaders can support their teams and wondering if you could go a little bit more into how leaders can be supported. So how do they take care of themselves so that they can then in turn take care of their teams? Yeah, that's great. I actually had this in here from a previous presentation. Leaders need to take care of themselves. Um, I... You know, I know things that I need to do to take care of myself, but there's, there's coaches out there, there's mentorship programs, reach out to me, I'd be happy to connect you depending on your industry, but, you know, reach out to your peers, reach out to your network, hey, do you want to get together for a coffee or a virtual coffee? Um, there's so many things, but leaders, the pressure is on, so acknowledge that, be receptive of that, and take responsibility for that, but at the end of the day, make sure you're eating right and you're exercising and meditating and all of those things that we hear all the time, really do it because uh, it's, it's tough. So in that quote that you shared about feeling safe at work and that work-life balance, it's all at home now for so many people. So if there is an imbalance there with maybe not feeling as secure at work, at work and then being at home, what are some suggestions for those on the call who might be able to find a better balance if that's the case for them? You know, um, I would say to reach out to your manager, your supervisor, that's your first point of contact. And if you don't feel safe going to that manager or supervisor, is there somebody else in your organization that does? Um, like I said, it's a, it's, a, it's a good job market. So if you're working at an organization that doesn't value you, you can bang your head against the wall all you want. Um, and maybe you're not gonna make a change, maybe you will. But at least give your employer the opportunity to make a change and it won't happen overnight, but at least if they're receptive to the conversation and you can see little trails of improvements, I would say that would probably be something that I would encourage you to do. Um, again, that person that mentioned sleep to me, I had no idea that that mattered to them. And it was quite impressive that they took the time to do that. And now I, real, and now I know that and I value that. 
So you mentioned the she session. So we'd love to talk a little bit more about what that is and some suggestions or examples on how to avoid that. So, um, and I'm not an expert on this, but I would say that, so what is happening is unfortunately women are leaving the workforce at greater numbers. I think I saw something like, you know, 78% the other day more than men. Um, and it's a result mostly because of families being at home, children going to school, not going to school, those types of things. And women just feeling like, well, I can put my, my you know, career on hold. Um, because my family is my first priority. So ways for um, you know, employers to help with that is to, again, have the conversation. You know, if you're not in regular conversations with women, with men, whatever, then you're not understanding what their needs are. So again, I would say that's on the employer. Maybe at some point there's nothing you can do. Somebody just needs to be home. Maybe they have a child with special needs, whatever that may be. But is there an opportunity for them to come back in three months, in nine months, whatever it is. So be flexible. What are some of the greatest challenges that you are seeing in the workforce right now? Oh, above everything else I just talked about today. <laughs> um, you know, I would say it, it's, it, it seems easy. And what I just ran through in 25 minutes, it seems like it makes sense and it seems easy, but everything is, is hard. I know that it, everything is just different. It's, we're not used to anything that we're doing. Um, I'm looking at all of your faces. I'm not going to get to get any feedback from you after this session. You know, so think about that in the workplace where you're, you know, a leader right now just says, I'm going to give everyone a, you know, a million dollar bonus. And that's great. And everyone's like, great on the zoom. And then everyone goes back to their daily and then that leader gets no feedback, right? So think about if you're an employee who's at home and just spend an extra, you know, two hours working on a project and you feel like you just killed this project. You put everything you possibly had into it and you got an email back from your president that said, great work, right? There's just, there's, there's just not enough human, you know, interaction. So, you know, I actually said the other day, what happened to phone calls? Like phone calls are gone, right? <laughs> just pick up the phone. I don't want to feel like I have to stare at somebody's face. Sometimes just hearing someone's voice can be enough. So unfortunately, um, employers are dealing with so many issues. We're not even talking about the financial side of things, but, um, you know, we will get through this, right? We have made it eight months. If we can make it another eight or another 16, it sounds terrible and it sounds forever, but we can do it. So as we look ahead to potential, when we can go back to the office, how much of what we're learning right now about team dynamics and working with each other will stay and travel back with us to the office space? Gosh, I don't know that. I don't have a crystal ball, but I would say, I think a lot will, right? I think hopefully leaders are recognizing that if somebody has to run out and do a phone call or do a, you know, work from home from three to five, that they're still as efficient. You know, somebody asked me the other day, do you feel like productivity is down the same or up? And I said, it's absolutely the same. And I think our productivity is up. Now we are in a professional services, um, you know, organization. So I know that's very different than some of you that have to be interacting um, on a day-to-day -day basis and you need to be physical. However, I think a lot of this is gonna stick, right? I mean, people, we've been doing this and in fact, I believe most of you have probably been more dedicated and more ingrained in your business than you have been prior, you know, the prior eight months before this pandemic started. So we're not going to easily forget this. Although we are resilient people and we do bounce forward, right? We do move forward. So some of this will hopefully go away. So Kelly, as we look to our last question here, um, for those who are interested in learning more and want to follow up, um, how might they access uh, the resources of ERC? Thanks, yeah, so um, we do this all the time. So we are a membership association, we are 501c6. We are here to help organizations like all of yours. Um, really, you know, inexpensive way to do that. So your erc.com is how we can do this. That is my goal. That is my mission is to help people like you, you know, don't spend the time Googling, wondering all of that. We have certified HR professionals on staff that can help. So sorry for the pitch, but it's, but it's a, that's our mission is to help organizations and we use the data. So hopefully the data today was relevant to all of you. And yeah, you can always yeah. reach out to me, find me on LinkedIn or, you know, ask, I'm always help, always open to helping. 
Well, Kelly, I know we've actually had a couple comments in the chat appreciating the data. Um, so I think that being able to see that and understand that will certainly help as people look to supporting their teams as we continue on in, in this new world that we are living in. And we thank you so much for your insights and your time today. And we will be sure to get the slide deck so that we can share it in the follow-up. Sounds good. Thank you all for showing your faces too. It's nice to see people. <laughs> And with that, I'm going to welcome back Marianne. Thanks, Rachel. And thanks so much, Kelly. You provided a number of lifelines for people who really, really needed it at this point in time. So we're grateful.